What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map. In the sky blue color playing as Poseidon. His name is Farron. His partners today in the purple color playing as Oranos. His name is Platinum. And finally rounding out the team in the yellow color playing as Loki. His name is Zokyo. Their opponents today in the... Wait, before I finish that, they are the team GDM. The Gladiators Dell Mythology. I say as Australian as I possibly can because the, their team is it's actually... It, it's Gladiators of Mythology, but Gladiator Dell Mythology. Yes. Okay, anyways, onwards and upwards. Their opponents today in the green color playing as Zeus. His name is Mateo. In the red color playing as Loki. His name is Ninjo. And finally, in the blue color playing as Oranos. His name is Tunison. And guess what we have, ladies and gentlemen? I'll show it to you, and then I'll unshow it to you. We've got ourselves the map Borderlands. Boom. What's special about Borderlands? Well, everyone spawns incredibly close. Look at this. One screen length away, and then we go up to here, roughly. Two screen lengths away, and bam, there's a player there. So you're incredibly close to your opponents here uh, in this map, on this map, in this game, and all of the good stuff that comes from it. So this is going to be incredibly exciting stuff. It should be very, very aggressive. We see Loki, Zeus, Uranus, Loki, Zeus, Uranus against Uranus, Poseidon, and Loki. So we see a lot of the same gods coming in from these teams. A lot of the times, the uh, the quote-unquote S-tier gods of team games get seen in every single one of these games, unless it's a certain different map. So on all the lair maps, Loki and Uranus do reign supreme, and that's why we see them quite a lot. But we also have to remember that, well, you've got in these games, you've actually got Uranus mains and Loki mains as well. So Tunison playing uh, his Uranus, he's not going to play anything else because he's an Uranus main, and Uranus is good on every single map. Same two here with Platinum seems to be the case. Farron, on the other hand, he's a he's a Greek player, and he's going to be running in with his uh, with his Poseidon. Here. He played Zeus in the first game, deciding to shake things up here with the Poseidon, thinking, yeah, maybe the maybe the Centaur not the best idea here in this next game. We'll try something else, uh, and then we also see him Tokyo going with Loki. Uh, he was playing Kronos in the last game, so I'm surprised to see him switch it up into the Loki. Uh, he, they had some success actually not using Loki on Alfine, but that's maybe just because there's no hunt here. Whereas on Borderlands, or there I should say, no hunt there. On Borderlands, however, tons of hunt on the map, and it's all back hunt. It's all back hunt. So the places to... Oh, there's actually a little bit of hunt in the middle as well. So normally, what you want to do is attack the opponent on the front, but it kind of is in, in inverse here uh, on this map here. You want to actually go around the back. As you can see, if I take a quick... Oops, if I take a quick look here, you can actually move through these back locations. There's a big opening here. Hit the hunt on the back of your opponent. This is where you want to go. So if you're the Loki player, come back here, kill these things. Of the dream. Uh, so both both of... Uh, we'll see how it's going to go. But Mateo going through Zeus here does effectively mean to me that Mateo wants to go for Athena, wants to be aggressive with the Hoplite and have a good time there. That's what Mateo is going to want to do. He's got the pocket Loki here to help him out as Forsetti is going to be coming through. Prometheans, uh, uh, Prometheus is coming through for both of these Aranos players in relatively standard fashion as the Aranos players get matched up against each other uh, in very, very standard fashion yet again. So we'll see how it's all going to go. We are seeing... Uh, well, it's a little bit difficult here. With this Poseidon and Loki pick from Team GDM, they are actually playing into a very, very tough game for themselves. Because the essentially, the Zeus player here can go mass hoplite. And they don't care about the, the cavalry. They don't care about the Hursa. Because they're just going to go straight for the jugular. And they're just going to say, look, Ninho, you deal with any raids that's coming on. Come and, come and help when you need. But deal with the raids with your speedy Hursa. While the Oplites just put complete pressure on. Uh, and effectively what this means from Zokyo's perspective is he needs to delay Hall of Thanes here. He needs to. You can't go for early Hall of Thanes. You need to drop double Longhouse and go for throwing Axeman Hursa at this point. And, uh, and see what's going to happen here. Uh, anyways, onwards and upwards. See how things are all going to actually end up happening. We do see standard play here from Tunison, standard play here from Platinum as well. 
as what is coming through here for Mateo is the big question. Very, very late advance time from Mateo as he's going to be dropping Military Academy, Military Academy. Now, this is something I don't like. If you are playing Zeus in team games and you advance this late with good hunt in your base, you're playing incorrectly. You need to be advancing at the very latest 4.30. If not, going for a four minute advance time because it's just too slow and you're going to end up losing to the Norse players. You're going to end up losing to everyone if you do this uh, because everyone uh, at the higher levels. But I guess in this game, everyone chooses, choose, has chosen to advance a little bit later here as Jason coming through. We do see the Hippolyta in. I imagine we'll see a bolt onto that one as Ninho already clicking up through Hall of Fanes, one of the faster Hall of Fanes you're ever going to be seeing here as he's going to be retreating away. We see the Minotaur coming in here as this Hippolyta is going to be the, uh, the unit of choice here to target going to be retreating back we see the stables coming down here for Farron though as we've got four military buildings up for Mateo already in this game this is reminiscent of AOM King's build here double going up to five military buildings straight away to spam units out and get a really really big mass about eight minutes into the game is kind of why you do this uh, and see if you can get a big timing uh, timing there as we do see a bolt getting dropped somewhere. Meanwhile, these units going after each other over here, Platinum versus Tunison. It's going to be a bit of a, a slog there at this time as the uh, as the Hippocon going to be retreating away. We'll see how things are going to continue in this game as the uh, as the Hursa here from Ninho trying to hold on. We do see Ninho going for that early Hall of Thanes. We'll see if it's going to work out for him. Normally, the Zeus player is going to be able to overpower the, the Loki player if they go for these early Hall of Thanes because they just have so many more units than you. You, effect you effectively invested 300 resources into units not named military uh, and or, or something not named military and your opponent has not. So they will oftentimes have the advantage where that's concerned here. As we do see these Hippocon coming through, going to be sniping down some straggler Toxodes. The Toxodes here trying to retreat back into this position. We do see a Ainiar getting spawned over here as the uh, Hippocon retreating away from this spot. Now Platinum can actually think about coming over and hitting some raids over here. Uh, we see him coming through with Promethean looking to take down some of Ninho's units here as the Terma pushing in, going to be trying to find something on this position, hitting the, uh, the, the villagers on this location here. Could be really, really strong as he's trying to kind of duke around this Hursa that's getting some good damage done. But Zoko still alive here, still going pure Hursa. Why not go pure Hursa? He hasn't been hit on this hunt just yet as the uh, Ninho Hursa needs to move around there and find them as he's going to be circling around the back. He could have gone the complete opposite way to avoid the line of sight, but those Hursa are going to get spotted there. We see Zokyo moving over. The question is, will Zokyo have actually spotted that by looking on the minimap? Does he realize his villages are going to be under pressure? in the near future here as this game is going to be continuing on. We do have to remember that uh, there is there is access to ceasefire here in this game. And as the Hursa is circling, you've got to attack right now because look at this. The Hursa come in, the villagers are going to be gathering and the units need to be attacking to distract Zokyo because Zokyo is simply just going to retreat away. And while this is doing damage, it could have done so much more. Spy getting dropped here. We do see the Longhouse getting dropped over here. Uh, Troll spawn going to be helping out just a little bit here to take down some of these villagers. One villager down, two villagers down, just Barely two villagers down. Nice play there by Ninho as this longhouse is going to get abandoned for some reason, building that up the way that they did. We see uh, we see medium infantry coming through now for Mateo. Let's check out his upgrades right or his economy now. 78 population here for Ninho uh, as as the game continues. We've got husbandry also coming through. I said that already. Anyways, we've got now Tunison taking the, uh, the initiative now to try and push in to Farron's base, looking for some aggression here as the units are going to simply just look to walk straight in and start taking down Zokyo's army here. He's got plenty of units, plenty of production here. We see the uh, Ainhi are going to help out Ninho a ton here as well. Two Ainhi are here as well, going to come in and be an absolute uh, slog fest here as we do see that uh, Farron coming around on the back. The army here for Mateo are going to be doing tons of damage to trying to target down those Toxodes as best as he can as those Hoplites do beat out on the Hippocon here. Restoration going to be getting dropped onto this position as Farron has to retreat back. He's going to be losing a ton of units as he's pulling away but now there's no restoration push onto the town center but maybe it doesn't matter because look those Iron here can just move in tank the town center and Mateo can just push in and kill it off himself here if he so chooses. The Hursa over here going to be getting taken down as well as uh, Ninho trying to do his best to take out these units. We see the temple going down. That's going to be dropping the Odin's wand there as Ceasefire gets clicked here 
by Farron. The army of Tunison, not really doing all too much over here, but distracting as best as it can. But this is going to be just a little bit of breathing room here for Zokyo. If we take a quick look at Zokyo's... Uh, Platinum's at 115 population. Zokyo's at 93 population. Farron, though, he's the one behind at 69. He needs to get closer to that 115. Uh, in fact, we can probably just hit this for the time being and just kind of see uh, what's happening here. You can see the the population for everyone on the left there. 115 for Ninho, 95 for Mateo, 95 for Farron, 120 for Platinum, 100 for Zokyo. It looks like we might be okay here. Uh, if you are a Team GDM supporter, they look like they might be able to continue surviving here in this game. But while this is going on, uh, Ninho drops a side build on the back. The villagers on this gold line over here doing nicely. Good walls up currently though for, uh, for Zokyo. As I imagine this town center is going to be the next. Look at this. Ninho trying to come in here and tank this town center the troll going to be getting targeted down first will get picked off very fast though as the hoplites are going to be marching in here tunison coming in as well as everyone deciding to converge on this location we do see platinum coming in on the back there is shockwaves available there should be shockwaves available here as the town center is getting torn down with mateo's crazy amounts of hoplites here we see the army moving in for tunison everyone fighting in on this position no restoration remaining here shockwave does get thrown down they're very very late by Platinum. Not sure what he was waiting for there as the troll spawn coming over here. No real help coming in from uh, Zokyo's perspective here. He doesn't have any ox carts here to eat these Thunderbolts. He has to move over here. Meanwhile the gold mine getting targeted down as Zokyo is getting absolutely massacred here. But the question is can Team GDM hold on and do enough damage to help Zodiac back, or sorry not Zodiac Zokyo back in to this game here as the archers doing what they need to do here to take down all the units in the back. We do have all of the upgrades here for Mateo as it looks like the towers have been cleaned up on every single one of these positions over here. We see the Hursa taking down these units as well with the help of these longhouses pushing through onto this position here. You can take down the villagers over here. One ox cart remaining over here. One ox cart over here. So this could be Zokyo down to zero ox carts if uh, GDM... Sorry, if Tud wants to take this out, he can kill this one off. And it looks like CUD is coming out in front on this fight here as the Iron help, help has helped out so much in these fights. Here we see the uh, Toxodes happily sitting underneath this healing spring, helping them get back up to full HP. The Ox Guard has been taken down. This is the final Ox Cart over here. And surely CUD has to know that this is the case here. Taking down this Ox Guard means that there is no chance for Zodiac to... I said it again, no chance for Zokyo to come back into this game. And Zokyo decides the game is lost here. Taps out, says GG, GDM falls here to CUD as Z CUD manages to take this game in four games over GDM, manages to f make their way to the next round here, ladies and gentlemen. Incredibly well played game here by Team CUD. Really, really nice series. They, they lost on Alfheim to some, uh, maybe a little bit of unprepared uh, kind of Atlantean aggression here there with the Cronus, but they recouped here in game number four. They played a really, really solid Zeus-Loki strategy here to push in and destroy the enemy Loki. I do feel like Zokyo not going for throwing Axemen was his big mistake here. Just go for throwing Axemen against Athena is all I can say. Get yourself all the fans later. It's going to be completely fine to just have unupgraded units there. Th the throwing Axemen are going to be completely fine here. And the, her the uh, then allow the Hippocon to come in and deal with the opponent's Hursa, completely fine to do it that way if that was your option, but unfortunately GDM didn't go for that, we didn't get to see exactly what would have happened if that would have ha been the way that happens. Anyways, CUD wins, they're going to go on to the next round and face UCA Lizards, that's going to be a powerhouse blockbuster series though, you're going to be seeing Matrius, you're going to be seeing Ragnaroks, you're going to be seeing all of these ridiculously strong players, Demantis, all these strong players going up against Cud here and we'll see if Cud can get some dubs against them anyways if you guys enjoyed this game enjoyed this series please consider hitting the follow on the twitch if you're on the youtubes hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next game